one of my favorite people since we've been doing in the music room is David Starr for a lot of reasons, but dominantly because of the person he is, as y'all will see tonight. Um, he's a great songwriter, great artist, even a better person, David Starr. You're very kind, man. <laughs> Randy, can I get just a little more of that guitar on the monitor? You can. Thank you. Good. All right, well, uh, thank you for being here. I, I, I know some of you from times past, and then there's some people here I know from, from a past life, and uh, they found me. You can try to hide from these people, but, you know, that's right. There's Google and Facebook, and they're going to find you. So so uh, going to do two sets tonight. We'll do kind of a longish first set, and then we'll go uh, stretch our legs and... Uh, um, got a bunch of CDs and stuff out there for sale. There's one uh, vinyl record that uh, my last album of original material came out on the 4th of March, 2020. So you can imagine that I have boxes of that stuff. <coughs> <laughs> Timing is everything. But anyway, um, so we'll go through a bunch of those different CDs and, and play some different stuff. This first song I want to play um, was sort of like, like a number of tunes I've written, was sort of born on the small the main street of Cedar Edge, Colorado, which is where I live. Anybody know where Cedar Edge is? Yes. My parents had land there. Huh? Really? Yeah. It's worth more now than it was then. <laughs> um, so, so, uh, and I'll tell a couple of other stories about it, but there's a fellow named Jody who's a cobbler, and he would fix your boots and your saddle and your belt and whatnot. And he passed away about a year and a half ago, had uh, some sort of uh, cancer, but... Um, I could go into the coffee shop on a Monday morning and carry my boots in in a, you know, grocery sack. I'd say, Jody, can you, can you fix the heels on these? He said, I'll have them for you Friday. And then Friday, I'd pick them up at the coffee shop, and give them forty bucks. And anyway, so one day he's kind of a spiritual guy, and one day I walked in. And I said, uh, so Jody, how you doing? And he said, Another day, another shot at mercy. And I said, I'm stealing that. He said, Good. So. When he passed away, they asked me to sing this at his uh, service, but I was on the road, so they used the recorded version. But uh, uh, I'm going to send this out. It's kind of this. This one kind of weighs on me. I've got a friend in Ukraine that's been in her basement now for six weeks with her three dogs and her husband. She's in the town of Dnipro, which is not being hammered like some of the stuff over there. But I've been sending this out every uh, every night. It's kind of about getting through the day, you know, for lack of a better one. It's called Night Rolls Around. <laughs> Another day, another shot at mercy One more chance to get it right So many questions when the answers are few So many people looking for the light But the sun is still shining outside I'm still long for the right And if I play my cards right I'll be here when the night rolls around One more heartbreak One more promise gone It's just another round in the fight There's only so much For me to go around Oh, and everybody wants a bite But the sun's still shining outside Well, I'm still long for the right And if I play my cards right I'll be here when the night rolls around A frozen moment on a tightrope we try to hold on to what we can But the planet shakes and the rain falls down As we navigate these ever-shifting 
So you cast a shadow, you make some noise, try to make your mark in this world. You better break some rules if the rules don't seem right. But do not go quietly with your flag unfurled, cause the sun's still shining outside. You're still long for the right And if you play your cards right You'll be here when the night rolls around mm-hmm. If you play your cards right You'll be here when the night rolls around mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah When the night rolls around Yeah, the, the whole idea of driving from Denver to here, I don't recommend it. <laughs> it seemed it seemed at the time, well, I drove from Cedar Edge to Denver yesterday, which is four and a half, five hours. No big deal. Got there a little early, took a nap in the motorhome, set up and played, had a big crowd there. It was fun. Got on the road, drove three and a half hours, slept for what seemed like a minute. You know, I mean, you don't, have all night with you. You got had five good hours. It's not enough though. I'm old. I need more. <laughs> this is a song uh, I wrote a long time ago, and I've recorded it. I think maybe four different times. Um, the premise was, you know, if you've ever met somebody and you thought, "Wish I'd met you back in the day," we'd have either really been great, or we'd have killed each other, or something. You know, you just who knows? You can't go back. And, can't go back and undo all that, but. Um, I've recorded it three or four times, I guess, and I'm trying to get it, get it like I like it. And it's on an album called South and West out there, and I think I finally got it like I want. So, if you get the album, then you'll see it's a sales pitch. It's called "Could Have Run Together" for those of you taking notes. Some of you are. Maybe you can read them back to me later, so I'll know what I did. This could be very helpful. Well, I know you noticed There's lines on my face These men granted in the years that I was lost I know you think you understand When you've been in my place But it's harder than you think To calculate the cost So persuasive, darling Your argument's so strong And God knows I'm looking for direction In these days But times have changed me, baby Changed you too And they've changed the way This lover's game is played Well, I wish that I'd known you long ago have run together you and I tore down the walls wound up a prisoner just the same why'd it take so long to learn to fly could have run together you and I
There was a time I was you and you were me Had nothing in the world it seems Ever come between But for all the times You and I have chased the dark Damn the plaques and tangles of the mind well, We are souls connected Connected by a spark Honey sparks these days are so hard to find Well I wish that I'd know you long ago Could have run again you and I Tore down the walls Wound up a prisoner just the same Why'd it take so long Learn to fly Could have run again You and I I don't want to take so long To learn to fly Could have run again You and I Yeah, you and I Bless you Thank you. So one of the things I set out to do in the last six, eight years was spend more time in Nashville writing with people, and I've been lucky to be connected up with some some people who have got it together. You know, we know how to write songs, and and, uh, and some of them it works pretty well to write with them, and others it's like, well, we wrote one, but yeah, you know. But there's a gal named Irene Kelly, and I've written about six or eight songs with her, and I really like writing with her. She had a, uh, she's mostly a bluegrass artist, so if you listen to Bluegrass Junction on Sirius XM or whatever, you'll hear her stuff. And uh, uh, she wrote a song called uh, I'm a Little Bluer Than That that Alan Jackson had a hit with a few years ago. So um, so she's got, you know, got it going on, but she's a great gal, and really good singer and artist. And so... You know, you never know where the inspiration is going to come from. So one day I'm with a guy at the time who was with my publicity um, firm, and we're sitting at a at an event, kind of a big living room sort of event in Nashville. It was one of those uh, things where they get everybody all um, liquored up before noon and then bring them in to listen to music from noon to three or whatever. And uh, and it was it was a good show and all that, but they had the big armchairs. It was really kind of nice and comfortable. So Craig looked at me and he said, what are you doing tomorrow? And he's kind of deadpan, you know, not real effusive. I said, well, I'm going to write with Irene. He said, great. What are you going to write about? He said, I don't know. He said, well, don't give me hope. Meaning don't write anything hopeful. I said, well, so I got to Irene. She said, you got a title? And I said, yeah, don't give me hope. <laughs> you starting to see how this works? I just yeah. go around going, I'll take that. <laughs> but that is how it works. Um, and this song is, is sort of about waiting for somebody to change that isn't going to. And we've all probably done that. Well, you say that you love me, you don't want to hurt me. I know you believe that it's real. But if you should ask me, but I really need Well, I'll tell you just how I feel The damage is done Nobody won It's time that we both face the fact And those baby blue eyes And pretty words won't bring me back Don't give me hope Cause I'll just hang on your promise is pulling me back to the past And I should move on I hung up on you When I just need the truth That's all I got, just enough rope To pull 
myself out Don't give me hope Well don't say you'll be different Cause you can't be different Believe me baby I know We want a world we can't have Stubborn as I am I can tell when it's time to let go And there's no denying These demons you're fighting May always be there in your way But I'm fighting them too Each time you ask me to stay So don't give me hope Cause I'll just hang on To your promises Pulling me back to the past And I should move on So I'm hung up on you When I just need the truth That's all I got Just another road Pull myself out Don't give me hope So tell I'll just hang on to your promises pulling me back to the past when I should move on hung up on you and I just need the truth that's all I got just enough rope pull myself out don't give me Just enough rope to pull myself out. Don't give me hope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't give me hope. Thank you. So I mentioned, I mentioned that album that kind of came out and then the world stopped. Um, in fact, we had a full band, you know, two days of rehearsals. The whole thing had a big um, CD release party on March the 4th scheduled at the Station Inn in Nashville. Anybody been to the Station Inn? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Station Inn's the most underdeveloped, expensive piece of real estate in Nashville because it's it's not as big as this house, and it's one story, and there, everything around it is like 20 stories now. And they're just going to wait and wait and wait. <laughs> and someday the kids will go, let's pull the trigger and be rich. But yeah. Anyway, it's a cool old place, a bluegrass venue. It's been there since 74, I guess. But Anyway, so we were scheduled to play there, and I'm ready to go. And on the night of the 3rd, there was a tornado that took out a big chunk of East Nashville. So I got up and called my publicist, and I said, no CD release tornado relief let's flip the switch and see if we can you know help some people and so um we put the word out and did some releases and got you know folks there for that but then you know the world kind of slowed down for a bit the album is um based on a book my grandfather wrote when when i was young uh he he wrote this particular book in 72 it came out and he died the next year and uh i never read his books because i I thought, well, that's just old guy stuff. We were friends, and I hung out with him all my life. But he died when we were, I guess, 73. We'd have been in high school, right? Mm-hmm. You know, what, 16, 17. So um, I never read the book, and I, I, I just didn't see what that was about growing up. Now I do. It's the same as what I do. He was an older person out there doing his work, his craft, you know, expressing himself creatively. So... Um, Bottom line, I finally read the book, and I thought, man, there's songs in here. There are these people and these places and these human frailties and all this stuff that makes for a great story, and there's kind of a whodunit in there as well. 
Um, so I I had the good fortune to have John Oates produce an album. I found John. He's down there next to Daryl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In fact, he's next to Groucho Marx, who has an even bigger mustache. <laughs> um, there's actually a there's actually a f uh, Instagram page called John Oates Mustache. He doesn't have a mustache anymore. But anyway, I digress. So we were having uh, he and his wife took me and my wife Cindy to uh, dinner on my birthday about five years ago and I gave him a copy of that old book he said what are we doing with that and I said I want to read the book I want you to read the book let's give it to a bunch of songwriters and then everybody writes songs inspired by the book and that's what we did and the album's called Beauty and Ruin so if you see that out there it goes with the book the book is a reprint of my granddad's book and the interesting thing is you can't really find the old books on Amazon anymore because I bought them all. <laughs> but I only bought about 20 because the way he would distribute his books is not that different than what I'm doing. He would go to a book fair or a, a clothesline fair, Prairie Grove or whatever, and he'd set up a card table and he'd sign these books. And I'll, I'll, get, them in, I'll get them in the mail and they have Fred Star $2. You know, he'd signed them, you know, and it's neat. But uh, I get it now. I wish I'd had the forethought to ask him more questions but uh, anyway I wrote this with Dana Cooper everybody here knows Dana Cooper yeah. a lot of you do this is called was he mm -hmm. yep it's called Beauty and Ruin I traveled far through the lonely wood Crawled when I had to, ran when I could No way to know what I would find Beauty and ruin at the end of the line This crooked road that I wound up on Led me to you Now you're gone I sky of blue Turned cold and gray Beauty and ruin At the end of the day Beauty and the sinking sun The union of two lonely ones Together in the dark Ruined in the brick and dawn In the heaven light falls on two hearts Torn apart They heed the story In a face grown old See the faded glory Of a shiny and rose Savor the sweet And bitter wine I was yours and you were mine Randy and I were talking earlier about how your brain works. 
I was looking right at a lyric here and said something that's not even on the page. What is that? What what part of your brain is that? It's a synapse collapse, as a friend of mine used to go. It was strange. I don't get that. Thank you. Um, speaking of John Oates, the reason I came to work with John is he he has a place over in the Roaring Fork Valley in, in the Aspen area. And I lived there in the early 80s, but we didn't cross paths because I was gone before he got there. And Anyway, but we have friends that are all in common. And, uh, and uh, so about 11, 12 years ago, some guys I know that are customers at my guitar store that play with John, they said, John, you need to come over and play with this guy. So so John booked me, had me book a show in this little town I live in because I had booked shows there for people. And uh, never heard me play. Sent me four songs on a, in an email and said, learn the slide parts, which meant you can't screw those up. Because <laughs> if you're playing slide and you have to stop, you just stop. And, you know, the rest of the band go on. So he, he was putting me in a position to not fail, and I get that. And uh, so we get to the sound check. The first day he comes over, and the first thing he does is show me his new guitar, and we hit, hit it off. And we play a song, and he has to play a solo. Just play a solo. And he stops. He says, well, you can actually play. <laughs> well, I'm trying, you know. <laughs> and he said, well, you'll just play all night then. And I said, you told me to play on four songs. He said, no, I just play all night. I said, I don't know the songs. He said, nah, don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> so it's a great, uh, a great lesson in uh, how to learn them in a hurry. But he's, he's been a great friend and a great mentor. And uh, we've written some stuff together. Uh, Beauty and, the Beauty and Ruin album, we wrote about five songs together, I think. But, but this is the first song I played for him when I asked him to produce a record. I said, let me just play this for you and see what you think. So it's called Edge of the World. First it seems a little broken A certain sadness in her eyes Deep and dark just like the ocean Frightened like a bird about to fly but She believes in better angels Better times to come That we all will be redeemed one day No matter what we've done Half the time she's a woman But half the time a little girl But take her hand Give her half a chance She'll take it to the edge of the world She'll take it to the edge of the world Well, her passion may consume you you're standing too close to her fire Be ready to let go Of all that you have known Be ready to walk high on her wire Cause half the time she's a woman Half the time a little girl Take her hand Give her half a chance She'll take it to the edge of the world She'll take it to the edge of the world Is she an angel passing through this troubled life On weary wings against the wind Nobody knows She believes in magic and all that it can do She'll make you be Give her half a chance She'll 
Thank you. I keep forgetting to take a drink of this. <laughs> we got into a discussion last night up in Denver at the show. I had a bottle of water. I was trying to open it. And apparently now everything has to be so hard to open that you have to get somebody else to help you with it. <laughs> and I'm doing this. I mean, I'm talking. I'm trying to introduce a song. And it went. <laughs> and then, of course, water went on the guitar, oh, which is fine. You know, I just... And so then I got off on this thing about, I'm just going to do it here, too. i got to get it out of my system. You know those little, so I sell these guitar tuners that clip on the top of the guitar, right, in my store. And they use what's called a CR2032 battery, which is a little disc about that big, right? Mm -hmm. If you get those in the 8-pack or the 12-pack or whatever it is, you actually have to have a nuclear device to get into it. <laughs> I don't know. I just get... You do, and I and I and I've never understood it. One day, because we have to buy those, and people say, "Can you put this in my tuner?" Sure, fine. So I get out a I get out a, a sheetrock knife, and I'm doing this, and I'm a guitar player. I shouldn't be doing that. Right? And I get it out, and then there's another layer of plastic. Well, the other day I thought, why is that? So I actually read the package. It's childproof, and then furthermore, and you'd have to have a very smart child with with biceps to get into it <laughs> and probably something sharp and then it says it's got a bitter coating so that if your child puts it in his mouth they'll go spit it out I thought man they do not want you to eat these batteries <laughs> okay that's it it's my tirade <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know where to start with that <laughs> Bitter, the bitter battery, yes. I don't know. It's, maybe I've had too much time in the car to think about this. Stuff. I still feel like my hands are on the wheels, so if I, if, I, if I make some sort of strange chord shapes. So this is a song. This was also sort of uh, had its uh, genesis on Main Street in Cedar Edge, Colorado. A few years back, if you've heard this story, bear with me. The town got enough money together to redo what's called the business district on Main Street, which is three blocks. Yeah, and so... They took the low bid, and then I think they went right below that and took the one below it <laughs> because it took like four months, and it should have taken six weeks or whatever. And they tore up everything, and you couldn't drive on the street for months and months, and my store's right in the middle of that. So it was a long, hot summer of not doing much business. Um, and we have a lawyer down the street that comes down every now and then and says, hey, can you come down and witness a will? And my observation has been, when I go down to witness these wills, that these are people that are very shortly going to need their will. <laughs> and that often their kids have brought them in going, I'm begging you, Mom, just get a will because you're going to need it very shortly. <laughs> um, well, it's old people in my town. So anyway, we go down there. We, we witness wills for him all the time and other documents. And so one such day during that renovation on Main Street, he came in and he said, uh, hey, can you uh, come down and witness a will? And as, as luck would have it, I had a store full of people, and I said, Larry, I met him on the sidewalk. We were talking. I was looking up and down the street, and I said, I can't. i got people in my store. I'm the only guy here. He said, well, I understand. He looked up and down the street, and he said, it's getting hard to find a witness on Main Street. <laughs> so I looked up down. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what I do, you know. So, <laughs> it's not plagiarism on a title. Now, if you, it's, it's just inspiration. <laughs> Literally, that's the, you know. Um, but uh, I gave that title to Dana Cooper, and he ran with it, and so he and I wrote this one together. He kind of took the tack that it's uh, um, kind of an ode to small towns that sort of dry up, blow away if you don't take care of them. And I, I've seen some this last couple of days. It's called Hard to Find a Witness. Well, it's hard to find a witness on Main Street anymore With the old ones laid to rest And the young ones gone to war Sometimes I wonder what it is we're fighting for When we're closing down the schools and the old grocery stores But the liquor store is still open And a lawyer does his best 
And most of us keep hope And we learn our day of rest Sometimes at night I wonder what I'm working for I'm not asking for it all I just need a little more It's hard to find a witness On Main Street anymore It's hard to find a witness Down on Main Street anymore But I love this little town You want to watch a falling In a world so full of strangers, I want to know my neighbor's name. And as much as we're all different, I'd like to think we're not the same. Sometimes I wonder what it is we're waiting for. Could it be this broken promise is an open door? It's hard to find a witness on Main Street anymore. It's hard to find a witness down on Main Street anymore. You know that one. All right, let's do a song we don't know very well. See how that works. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Is Tony Cone still there? Who? Tony Cone, the ice cream store? No. Oh, darn. How old are you? <laughs> no. It was 20 years ago that I was there. I've, I've been there 21 years, and I don't remember it being there. Oh no! Yeah, I know what you're talking. You're talking about the the the, the Aspen Trails Campground, which yes, was up the highway. Yes, 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 yes. Well, it's like five miles from town. Yes. Okay. <laughs> In twenty years. Yeah, no, it's still there. It's uh, still there. The pe- different people own it now. Oh. Tony's Tony and Pat don't own it anymore, but uh, yeah, that they, they would they would make a an ice cream cone that was. It's like four or five scoops hanging on this gigantic. Dang. It was ridiculous, and you 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 almost guaranteed to fall off on the car seat, you know. Um, There's a song in that. <laughs> so I uh, went down in early December and tried to record some stuff and and. Recorded uh, three new songs, redid a couple of old ones, and then recorded one that Eric Stuckey and a friend of his wrote. And I don't know what I'm going to do with them this year, but this is one of them. The idea was um, the the concept of trying to just grow, get better, all that stuff, and how we're all always looking for something else out there. We're going to England and Scotland. I haven't been in, in two years. So I asked Eric, I don't know, 10 months ago, I said, if I can get another tour together, do you want to go to Scotland and England? And he said, yeah. So here it is. It's time. We've got to have it. He's, he's, right here. he's really good, too. I've known Eric since he was about 15. Just this kid carrying around this mandolin that was bigger than him, you know. He's gotten so much better just... He's been playing like eight hours a day down on Lower Broadway in Nashville. He's on this. He recently quit doing it because he was just wearing himself out. But when you play that long and that often, you know, four or five days a week, 
you get good. So. It's called A Better Me. Well, I used to be afraid of flying But I don't remember why Was I worried about the fall Or just giving up control And I've walked away from burning bridges With a matchbook in my hand Bad bets and good intentions Lighting up the night They say a man can change They say a man can grow I'm moving in that direction Gotta walk before I run When the better me shows up I'll let you know The stories that we tell ourselves As if we all have wings to fly away But the gods have all gone home And the angels have all flown It looks like we're here to stay But I'm dreaming of another country With the northern lights close by where castles lie on the shore like soldiers They're watching over me They protect me from my appetites Born of trouble in the dark I'd find connection that I crave And be at peace in some small way They say a man can change, they say a man can grow, I'm moving in that direction. Gotta walk before I run, when the bed of me shows up, I'll let you know. Gotta walk before I run, when the bed of me shows up. Working on it. Thanks. I played that last night. I realized there was a part in there I hadn't had anything to do with. And when I got to it, I went, oh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> we got through it. This is the, uh, the title cut to the first record I did with John Oates. It's called The Head and Heart. And there, I learned something um, about this. You, if you... If you name a song, it's probably a good idea to Google and see how many other songs have the same name, as in dozens. Maybe you could come up with something else. But sometimes nothing else will work. So anyway, it's called The Head and Heart. Love unexpected, love unrequited. Feels like trouble And you try to fight it Like the hurricane wind Like the timeless tide You can't run You can't hide When a head and heart cannot be reconciled When a grown-up love calls out to you Steals your inner child the heart knows there's a price that must be paid The head knows that decisions must be made Have you tried everything you can? 
Say it all that can be said Between a woman and a man I just thrown gasoline On a blazing fire Built a fence made out of dreams And razor wire When the head and heart Cannot be reconciled The heart knows there's a price that must be paid The head knows that decisions must be made Well, it's a runaway train It's a wrecking ball It's a burning house And it's bound to fall Well, it's a mandolin rain And a hungry heart Where there's a longing in and the true love star Hope springs eternal For the likes of you and me From a thousand miles away There's a candle I can see but Like a hurricane wind Like a timeless tide You can't run I you can't hide With a head high Reconcile when a grown up love calls out to you, stirs your inner child. The heart knows there's a price that must be paid, the head knows that decisions must be made. The heart knows there's a price that must be paid, the head knows that decisions. Must be made. Thank you. In theory, yes. Really wow. How weird. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where that that popped in my head one day. I thought, well, I better write that. Mm -hmm. So, um, when the um, pandemic sort of settled in and we decided, okay, it's going to be here a little bit, what do we do? And I would communicate with um, songwriting friends around the country and around the world that and I would say, well, are you writing? And they'd go, no, man, I don't know what to write about. Is this going to last forever? Do we write about it in the past tense now that it's going to be over soon? Or maybe it's never going to be over? Or does it change everything? And there was all this uncertainty. So I found that a lot of people, including myself, weren't writing anything because there was just it was such a strange shock to the system. And so I thought, well, what's a good way to sort of fill the time since I don't have any inspiration of my own so I decided to record an album of cover songs and I made this list and it was like 40 or 50 songs 60 and then I had to go through and peel them back you know because you can't do that many um, well you could but you'd run out of money <laughs> and so um, so I I got it down to about 12 or 13 and finally settled on 11 cover songs and uh, and and uh, and one original. And there's an album out there called Touchstones. And it was never going to be a CD or an album, whatever. The idea was that we just release them once a month with a little video, some more elaborate than others. And we'd just do it online, and there wouldn't be any physical CD because we couldn't get out and play, and we couldn't sell it. So why have boxes of CDs stacked up like I have now? And uh, um, But ultimately... I had, was convinced that we should have a CD of it. and So we sent a couple hundred over to European radio and sent them all over this country, and they're getting played. You know, I'm getting paid for other people's music, and they're getting paid for me doing their music. Strange. So this is a Jackson Brown song that I always wanted to rec record. I've been playing it for a long time, and uh, wrote it when he was 16 years old. It's kind of just... 
you know, blows my mind. It's called These Days. Send this out to you. Well, I've been out walking I don't do that much talking these days These days These days I seem to think a lot About the things I forgot to do For you And all the times I had the chance to And I had a lover It's so hard to risk another in these days these days Now if I seem to be afraid To live the life I have made in song Well it's just that I've been losing For so long On cornerstones, count the time, quarter tones to ten. My friend, don't confront me with my failures. I had not forgotten them. Interesting, uh, a little thing I noticed during the um, on Facebook one day. Somebody was posting this. It was a question, you know. Some people, what's your favorite line from a song? Somebody posted, and I didn't participate, but I was reading, and one that came up out of forty or fifty responses. That very last, "Don't confront me with my failures. I have not forgotten them," was like in the top three or four. It was numerous. But that's interesting that, you know, you write a song like that when you're 16 and 60 years later. It's still yeah. relevant and poignant and all that. It's just a beautiful, sweet song. He's still out there doing it. So another one that I had to put on the on the uh, cover song record. Got any John Hyatt fans in the house? Okay. Down here the river meets the sea Stars 
Jimmy Mattingly played on it. Uh, he plays in Garth Brooks' band. Um, Dan Dugmore played Steel. Played with Linda Ronstadt for years and James Taylor. So it's a good record. Yeah, we ain't never gonna make that bridge tonight, baby. Cross Lake Ponte Train, and it feels like rain. Batten down the hatches, baby Leave your heart out on your sleep Cause it looks like we're in for stormy weather It ain't no cause for us to leave, no Just to lay here in my arms Let me wash away the pain like rain oh, It feels like rain Yeah, it feels like a rain Thanks. So uh, I mentioned I mentioned that I did eleven cover songs and one original, and right as the the uh, my wife has a, a son who lives on the island of Kauai, which is where she is at the moment, and two grandkids there. So she had gone over. Right as the kind of the hammer came down um, there in first of March to see them. And then immediately planes started getting canceled, and she couldn't get back, and then she'd try, and then it, anyway. She ended up staying over there two months, which is not the worst thing. <laughs> but I was all by myself. <laughs> anyway, so I'd been working on a song. My father used to have a house down in Cabo San Lucas, and I'd always wanted to, I used to go down there back when I wasn't nearly as well behaved as I am now. <laughs> Do you remember when I wasn't well behaved? I don't remember. That's because you weren't very well behaved either. <laughs> I, I went through a I got to a point in my life where I went, no moss, i got to stop. So I'm, I'm much better behaved in that respect. But we used to go down to Cabo and um, and burn all the candles down there. Um, and so I wrote that. I wanted to write a song about, um, you know, you could, like you've taken San Francisco, and there's a song about San Francisco and Chicago and New York and New Orleans. And so I wanted to use that locale as sort of the uh, the the – protagonist in the song i guess but uh that's about people but ultimately we use the, that setting so um and there'll be a big spot in the middle where there ought to be a screaming guitar solo which on the record i actually played it's one of those i played it and it all worked the first time and i went leave it alone <laughs> take one stop yeah sometimes you get lucky it's called cabo san lucas I watch the sun rise on the sea of Cortez As I drew your name in the sand 
Well, I saw your face in the water at my feet as it washed away the shadow of a man. Well, I closed my eyes and for a second I could see the color of your hair by candlelight. And I heard the murmur of your voice in my ear as we made love long into the night. Hey, your magic didn't last, but I will miss your starry skies. Cabo San Lucas, adios and goodbye. Remember in your eyes, oh, how I tried to hold on As you pushed me to the edge down by the sea But it's a heartache wind that blows across these desert hills tonight Calling out the fools like you and me Hey, your magic didn't last but I will miss your starry skies Cabo San Lucas Adios and goodbye Cabo San Lucas Adios and goodbye Cabo San Lucas Adios and goodbye Thank you. I got another new one. I have, you know, it's it's a funny thing. Writing songs is, you know, there's this whole this whole thing where the people that that are really really prolific songwriters get up in the morning. If they don't have a, you know, I mean, I got other stuff. I have a store to run and some things like that. I have a lot of things going on, and that's good. I like it that way, but. The, the conventional wisdom is Nashville is if you're going to write, you got to get up every morning and you got to have discipline and all that stuff. And I get that, and there's something to it. And I try to write every day. You know, I talk into my phone and have tons of stuff going on in there um, other than grocery lists. I can't do that. What, to write that way? Uh-uh. Well, it, I didn't used to think I could. I used to think that whole thing of making an appointment to write with somebody and all that, it didn't make sense to me. And then once you do it, it's like it stuff bubbles up that you weren't thinking. It's it's a good way to do it. But sometimes you get a gift, and that's what this one was. But it was, uh, again, <laughs> they're on Main Street, and it, I didn't borrow this from anybody. But uh, as anybody that's ever had a habit, like for me it was drinking, and there may be some other stuff, but... Um, <laughs> There's there's a certain amount of ritual that goes with that stuff, like certain, certain, you know, some people have to do a, their drink a certain way, and they have to have a certain martini, whatever, you know. So there's this whole thing, and people that smoke, I've noticed there's some of that too, because it's just a it's a habit, you know, and it's it's fine. I'm not judging, but I watched a guy one day on a bench out in front of my store, and he was doing something with a cigarette where he he did something where he took the filter off. And he was saving the filter, which I didn't understand because if you're not going to smoke it with the filter, why are you keeping the filter? What's so he's got a collection? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Well, there you go. But he was doing some kind of thing, and it seemed like it was almost like I wandered around there and said, "Light the thing. Let's go. Come on." It took. It seemed like it's just this agonizingly slow uh, ritual about anyway. Okay, I said I wasn't going to judge, but I'm kind of you know in that case. <laughs> 
but he was just taking too long and I was I wanted to get on with my life and I was watching him and I couldn't turn away <laughs> yes yeah, like a slow motion car wreck so anyway but I got it in my head that, that just that guy sitting there doing that with a cigarette and then I thought what do I do with that what do I do with that and then one day I just sat down and wrote this song and it's kind of about a guy ending up by himself and having a conversation you know maybe I sat down next to him and had this imaginary conversation it's called Any Chance of Going Home Well he twisted that brown filter off his cigarette Then he lit the ragged in and closed his eyes He whispered something about a girl from Coffeeville With a broken heart and a tattoo on her thigh it Was a long time gone and another life ago when a bit of a wind tore holes in childish dreams See, sometimes circumstance lays waste the best laid plans And it's years before we find out what it means They said, when you deal in other people's demons You will more than likely die alone Price I paid just waiting for the other foot to fall It's cost me any chance of going home dog became a proxy for forgiveness filling in the blanks on quiet nights never asking more than for companionship and affection and I never leave her sight now she's gone from here and nothing feels the same and all of the Forgiveness in the world Can't kill these restless ghosts Fill these empty rooms Or light these lonely halls Where they sway and swirl He said When you deal in other people's demons You will more than likely die alone And the price I paid just waiting for the other foot to fall It's cost me any chance of going home Price I paid just waiting For the other foot to fall It's cost me any chance of going home It's cost me any chance of going home Uh, this is a this company called Breed Love, mm -hmm. and they're owned by a company by the Bedell Company. So these were both made in the same place, but they're voiced very differently. Mm -hmm. This one, you'll notice it has something on the. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But mm -hmm. let's see, let me find this one I'm looking for. Okay. <laughs> So I was sitting in the guitar store one morning about 7 o'clock. I go into town early from my house, and I go in the guitar store, and it's dark, and it's, I can talk to the guitars. <laughs> and they talk back. And we have this conversation, and I'll take one down and, and noodle around on it. And sometimes it tells me what I should write. So This is dadgad tuning. And I was messing with a guitar like this, and I started playing that, and I thought it felt like a traveling song. So we'll travel to the intermission here right after this. It's called Good Is Gone. <laughs> From 
the ragged edge of losing you I fell back to earth Facing my worst fears Living in a world of hurt There was nothing on a fire horizon Everything at my feet No way to go but up No easy retreat Too much time in a rearview mirror I gotta keep moving on gone I ought to spend at conversations the past for truth these days choosing our worst instincts instead of choosing the words we say let's promise on a fire horizon still we wonder why nothing ever changes Take a little break. We'll be right back. Thanks for being here. <laughs> 